Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and to my humble TV room. And I'm here to do another in the series of film favorites, a uh, century of film favorites, and this is the decade of the 1950s. And I'm about a week behind everybody else, so I'm trying to catch up. All right, 1950 was the year of All About Eve, the best picture of that year. Great movie to watch for so many reasons. Um, Betty Davis, Ann Baxter, Marilyn Monroe, George Sanders, directed by Joseph Balmankowitz. Uh, a lot of reasons to love this film. It also set a very important record. It won 14 nominations and won six, which held that record. This movie held that record for 47 years until it was beat by Titanic. So, all, right, all about Eve, absolutely worth seeing. Next up that year, here's a great performance by uh, Humphrey Bogart and also Gloria Graham in a, in a classic film noir directed by Nicholas Ray in A Lonely Place. A wonderful film. Bogart plays one of his most uh, complicated, one of his darkest characters, and does a phenomenal job. All right, Gloria Graham is also terrific. Next up, 1950 was also the year of this um, not, not terribly well-discussed science fiction movie, early science fiction, George Powell's Destination Moon, in color with uh, a lot of special effects, which are outdated now, but for that time they were pretty phenomenal. And uh, it's about men going to the moon, and uh, it, it's still fun to watch. It's, it's for, for historic reasons and just for uh, sheer enjoyment, okay? Destination Moon. Next up is the year 1951. And I just did a video for that year because that was the year I was born. I uh, did my top 10 for 1951. And here's a film that I actually, a, a favorite of mine that I actually forgot about when I made that video. And my friend Wolfgratz reminded me of it in one of his comments on that video. This is A Christmas Carol starring Alastair Sim which is a, a big, um, it was a big tradition in my family to watch this on Christmas Eve. It seemed to show up every year on the same, the same TV channel about 10.30 on Christmas Eve, and I would sit there with my mother and my sister and watch it. And uh, I, I like to watch this on Christmas Eve now. Beautiful film, a lot of dark moments, a lot of very funny moments, and I think it's, I think it's the best version of the story, so Christmas Carol. Now we're up to the year 1952. And let's pay another visit to the great Betty Davis. She came back and made this nice little movie called The Star, in which she played uh, an older actress struggling with, um, well, a whole bunch of personal and professional issues, trying to make a comeback. And her co-star is Sterling Hayden, and Natalie Wood plays her daughter in the film. Uh, very good movie. Betty Davis did a good job, and she won another Academy Award nomination. Now, that same year, Miss Joan Crawford also made a, a very big important hit film called Sudden Fear, co-starring Jack Palance and Gloria Graham, a film that I've never seen, but I, I recently ordered a copy from Kino Lorber, so I'm looking forward to finally getting a chance to see it. I think Sudden Fear was probably a bigger hit than The Star, I'm not sure, but uh, Joan Crawford also won a, a nomination for Best Actress, so that was the only time when Miss Davis and Miss Crawford were competing for the Academy Award. I'm sure they had a lot of uh, coffee clatches and, and cheerful phone calls talking about who's going to win. Sure they did. Anyway, 1953, it came from outer space. Wow. Originally 3D, I've never seen it in 3D, but this is one of the best serious-minded science fiction films from the 1950s. Uh, kind of set the pattern for all of the lesser budget films that would come come afterward, but this is, this is really cool to watch, taken very seriously, all right? Next we have 1954, and this is the Judy Garland, James Mason version of A Star is Born, which to me is the best version of the story, uh, the best dramatic musical ever made. And Garland is the only musical star in this film, and it's a great showcase for her talent. And she also proves what a great actor she is, okay? Directed by George Cukor, uh, a big hit. All right. Next, in 1954, continuing with the... The advent of science fiction as a, as a really big, important thing at the box office in the 1950s. Them, all about the giant ants. We have James Whitmore, Joan Weldon, James Arness, Edmund Gwynn. Um, special effects are just so cool, infinitely cool. All right, next up, 1955. A lot of films for this, this particular year. I have to start out with my number one film of all eternity, which is The Night of the Hunter. Robert Mitchum, Shelley Winters, Lillian Gish. James Gleason, um, directed by Charles Lawton. I've talked about this many, many times, so I won't talk about it that much here, but it is it is just such a phenomenal film, 
and uh, deserves to be seen. So this great, um, very lovingly produced Criterion collection with lots of extra features. All right, 1955 was also the year of another very complicated, very dark Humphrey Bogart performance in The Desperate Hours, one of his latter-day uh, gangster performances, and one of his final films, actually. He, he did a very good job in this, Humphrey Bogart. Uh, next up, 1955 was the year that teenagers suddenly appeared, whereas they, before they were just sort of younger adults, but they, they became their own uh, genre with Blackboard Jungle. Wow, what a great movie. Glenn Ford, and Francis, uh, Louis Calhoun, Margaret Hayes, Sidney Poitier, um, a great movie for so many reasons. Sidney Poitier was playing a high school kid. I think he was 31 years old at the time. But this is a very hard-hitting, serious film, which, which resonates today, even after, after so much time. And um, let's see. Oh, the big thing about, one of the most memorable things about this is that they used a, a rock and roll tune called Rock Around the Clock by Bill Hilly and the Comets while the credits were rolling, and it became a big, big hit, okay? And uh, continuing with Teenage Angst, it seemed to be increasing in the 1950s. We have this classic Rebel Without a Cause starring James Dean, Natalie Wood, Sal Mineo, just just one of my favorite films. Uh, never get tired of watching it. So uh, uh, James Dean was unfortunately killed in a car accident before this was released, and uh, it became, which made it probably even more important than it would have been otherwise. But great performance by James Dean. All right. Now 1955 also had this interesting MGM musical, It's Always Fair Weather, uh, directed co-directed by Gene Kelly and Stanley Donan, starring Gene Kelly, Sid Charisse, Dan Daly, Dolores Gray, Michael Kidd. Now this is this is a very enjoyable and well-made film, but it wasn't a big hit in 1955. It seemed to be sort of the end of the cycle of uh, big budget MGM musicals, and it's kind of a maybe it had a lot to do with the fact that television was uh, intruding into the lives the lives of people. In fact, television plays a big part in this. They they lampoon it beautifully and do a very good job making fun of television. All right. Uh, now, 1956, this was the year of the first Italian horror movie called I Vampiri, which means The Vampires, starring Gianna Maria Canale, black and white cinematography by Mario Bava, which is why it's in the Mario Bava collection, directed by Ricardo Freda, who would, of course, make some horror films back in the 1960s. Now, this was, this was not a big hit because the Italians didn't like Italian-made horror films at that time. But uh, what's interesting about this among film fans is that Freda walked off the film toward the end for some reason, and Mario Bava took over as director, which is which is was his first experience directing a film. Before that, he had always just been a, a cinematographer. So he did both in this film, and uh, it's absolutely worth seeing, even though it was not a big hit at the time. All right, uh, the same year we have a classic American horror film, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Kevin McCarthy, Donna Winter, directed by Don Siegel. Um, Still a very uh, serious and uh, enjoyable film to watch after all these years, even though it's been remade several times. Now, 1957 took us farther into the, uh, the world of horror and teenagers. From American International Pictures, we had films like I Was a Teenage Werewolf, starring Michael Landon, and I Was a Teenage Frankenstein, starring Gary Conway. So... The cycle was moving on, and great fun it was. Uh, 1958 uh, was the year of my number one Alfred Hitchcock film, Vertigo. James Stewart and Kim Novak. I love this film so much, I can't even tell you. I probably should get the Blu-ray someday. This is uh, this is such a beautiful film to look at, and I think I think Kim Novak gives a great performance, even though a lot of people. Uh, give her grief for not being a good actress, but I think she's very, very good in this. 1958 also was the year of some more cool horror movies, like this kind of obscure Boris Karloff film called Frankenstein 1970, in which he plays, he doesn't play the monster, he plays the creator, he plays Dr. Frankenstein, or descendant thereof. And he does a very good job, a very serious acting performance uh, by Boris Karloff, who always manages to do, a, to do a good, convincing job, but he's not so over the top that it, it becomes sort of a parody. He, this is a very good movie with a lot of good moments. All right, Frankenstein 1970. Then we have, on the other side of the spectrum for Boris Karloff, we have 
Zsa Zsa Gabor in Queen of Outer Space, co-starring Eric Fleming. Uh, still a very enjoyable movie. Uh, super ridiculous, but great, colorful fun. And uh, you just don't get any better than Zsa Zsa Gabor playing a, an alien or something like that. Anyway, it's about a planet of women who, uh, when the, when men from Earth land, the, the women just kind of uh, <clears throat> go crazy. And, well, they should. And speaking of more science fiction and uh, classic female imagery, we have Allison Hayes in Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, which is uh, <laughs> truly a classic of the genre. Allison Hayes was gorgeous and, and really a decent actress. And there was another actress in this film, uh, a beautiful blonde named Yvette Vickers, who uh, gave the 50-Foot Woman a run for her money, even though they had no scenes together. But uh, that was, yeah, very cool movie. And then Yvette Vickers continuing on with such great success. In 1959, she made The Attack of the Giant Leeches. Once again, playing the same kind of part she played in, in uh, 50-Foot Woman. Another classic of its kind. Then we get up to 1959, and this is a very serious film called On the Beach, with a great cast of actors, Gregory Peck, Ava Gardner, Fred Astaire, Anthony Perkins, all about a group of people in Australia who are waiting for the aftermath of a nuclear um, holocaust, which has, has uh, destroyed, as far as they know, the rest of the world, and they're waiting for the radiation to come down to Australia and... and finish them off. So it's a very interesting human story. Sort of a science fiction type theme, type theme but not really. It's just a very uh, dramatic human story of all these intersecting lives uh, waiting to die. Fascinating film. And let's end up 1959 with uh, more teenage angst, or well actually less angst, more uh, of the beach party type. This is Sandra, Sandra D in Gidget. A, a great little film from 1959 co-starring um, Let's see, James Darren and uh, Cliff Robertson, Sandra Dee on the beach. And it, it kind of set the pattern for all the, the beach party movies that would come in the 1960s. And a delightful performance by Sandra Dee, who made another classic, and I should have I brought this down as well, another classic teenage film called A Summer Place. And uh, she was a big, big star at the end of 1959. So that, that is my video for uh, film favorites of the decade of the 1950s. Let me know what you think. Comments are welcome.